for me, it's hard to put into words. I think I'm really just exploring um, sort of these visuals, these material associations and languages I really enjoy looking through a queer indigenous lens, kind of trying to make work that speaks to me and hopefully speaks to others as well. Sigurli, hello. My name is Brendan Hoax. I am an interdisciplinary artist working from Chibuktuk, specifically Halifax, Nova Scotia. I am originally from London, Ontario, and I am indigenous from Oneida of the Thames. I will be showing you my studio, but also the other spaces that I spend a lot of my times creating artwork in. And we will begin here in my bedroom. More often than not, my room does act as a go-between uh, from when I purchase materials to when it needs to be brought to specific locations, whether that be the studio I work from or the print studio that I work out of. For me, this living space, it also essentially is a giant sketchbook. A lot of my demos and material explorations and visual explorations are done out of my bedroom. When I started my art journey long before I became a practicing artist, the bedroom was kind of one of the safest places to think about my own work and what I wanted to make as well as who I was as a person. I specifically want to explore the narrative that you can make art from anywhere, uh, even if you don't have access to things like uh, studio space. So over the past couple of years, I've been doing kind of three different things. One being illustration, two being kind of this textile sculptural work, and three kind of digital performance. And they all to me kind of have a through line uh, materially, symbolically, and in their relationship to like queer indigeneity. This most recent project I have is called Numero, which is these, they essentially are these body harnesses that have ribbon accents on them to kind of mirror things like ribbon shirts and ribbon skirts, as well as like power regalia, and as well as, well as like fetish harnesses that uh, people wear. So I kind of combined them and I decided to use an opportunity to create some and gift them to other, other indigenous artists throughout uh, Canada and and that project has led me into kind of what's going on now, which is larger scale structures that s use a similar sort of um, material, metals, st strapping and leather and, and kind of these, this ribbon to make these kind of larger structures that one can kind of walk through. have got to explore the past year printing on different materials like rubber latexes or leathers or suede to kind of like bring my illustrations to a similar kind of material that I've been using for these harnesses. Kind of using the same hardware to make like the structures in which they'll be hung or adorned I guess. And, and lastly I guess we can touch upon performance which is another thing that I, I do. It, has really, especially over the past couple of years, as we have had to live through COVID and the pandemic, they really manifested in digital performance. And it started with a residency that I did where I got to basically do a call and response with another artist while we live streamed our like web chat. And essentially all it was, was kind of like using materials and objects within our space to respond to one another and what we were doing. Basically the video chat became sort of this diptych of two different images that would kind of go along with one another in very, in very nice ways. Thank you.
I don't particularly think I have a coherent answer to to why I really do much of it aside from wanting to. And I think that's a good enough reason. I think for any artist, I think it's okay to not know. And I think that's the fun part about this whole process we call art and making. 